Hey everybody, my name is Michael Campbell. I am the family pastor here at Grace Church. Hey, we're just going over this week's lesson that the kids are going to be going through on Sunday. And so how do we as uh, primary discipleship makers be intentional about leading into that week? Questions to ask. That way, you know, when we pick them up from church, we know exactly, you know, what they went over and like how we can engage a little bit deeper. But we're going through Joshua uh, chapter 7 to 11, where God gave the people the land. And so we see that God has been fighting for his people and that he gives us peace and rest. And we live in a world that's filled with conflict and filled with pain, and we desperately want that peace. And the reality is that true peace doesn't come out of any amount of solitude or self-confidence, but we need true peace that comes from being forgiven. Peace comes as we trust in the finished work of Jesus, and it's his forgiveness, not our own effort, that brings us lasting peace. And so, I'm reminded of Paul's words in Ephesians chapter 2, 12 to 14, but in a world of conflict that's happening, Christ is that hope. In a world filled with division, he is our peace. And so the peace and the hope that Paul speak about are available to us when we put our trust in Christ alone for our salvation. And that's a continual daily dying to self so that we may live in Christ. And what the interesting thing about the section of scripture is, that your kids will be seeing like during the class is that we humans haven't changed and God has not changed. Israel obeyed God at Jericho and God fought for his people. They enjoyed success. But next they went up against a smaller city and relied on their own strength rather than seeking God's strength. They disobeyed and took things that um, devoted to God and, and then they went to a battle at AI without consulting God at his plan at all and their lives were filled with disunity then. Sin is the reason the world is in disunity and the lie that we believe is that sin is personal and it doesn't affect anybody else but it's a rejection against God himself and placing our trust in the things that he made and so the sin of one person, Achan, affected him, his family, and actually the whole nation. So Joshua's response was right. He, he humbled himself appealing to God's covenant-keeping power and responded with obedience when God spoke to him. So when we sin, we must recognize that the damage it creates in our lives and in the world around us. So our response must not be to cover it up, but to actually run to Christ because he is our hope, our life, our peace, and our forgiver. I'm reminded also of the quote from Charles Spurgeon, my faith rests not upon what I am, or shall be, or feel, or know, but in what Christ is, and what he has done, and what he is now doing for me. And so hopefully this could be a little snapshot into what the lesson is coming this Sunday. Um, there's questions attached into this uh, video in the email, praying that God moves in great ways as we uh, grow as families together. But God bless, and take care.